Right. And that's, I mean, that's one of the, the issues uh, that they had sort of politically and, and, and such is that um, unless they actually controlled significant amounts of earth, whatever they tried was doomed to failure because all the resources, all, all of the, or a lot of the resources are on earth. Um, you know, there's a lot of minerals and such on um, in space, but you just need earth for a lot of things. So uh, they really had to take control of earth for, for its resources. So it's more of a power play for the entire mm. ball of wax, not just independence. We want to be free. We're, we're they're yeah. kind of saying, well, not only are we going to be free, we're, we're taking over. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, it's the other interesting kind of element of that too, is that, um, um, a Xeon sympathizer would tell you, we cannot be free unless we have control of enough resources to make us free. Hmm. Um, one of the ideas behind the, the Xeon revolt is that Earth was controlling the colonies through its resources hmm. because it could withhold resources at any time um, and thus sort of bend the colonies to its will. So it was that was kind of a bargaining chip that the Xeon had to take control of in order to um, truly be free. Now, of course, that's a very debatable position, hmm. um, but that was kind of the uh, the idea there. Um, I mean, one of the cool things about Gundam is that they, they try to think through the science of their science fiction. Hmm. So they try to figure out, okay, well, if you're, if you're on a space colony, how do you get food? Yeah. Where do you grow all those vegetables? How much meat do you have? All that attention to detail really makes for a good story because mm. then it fills in gaps in the viewer's mind. You can yeah. say, well, what about, what about, what are they going to do when they, <laughs> you know, they do run out of bullets. It's yeah. not an <laughs> infinite carrying capacity that magically appears from nowhere where I have to believe every crazy thing. It's actually, oh, he's run out of bullets. Yeah. He's in trouble. <laughs> That's real. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's pretty awesome. Um... And that, that brought up the, the point of food, which yeah. uh, those guys started to, you, you started to see telltale signs of mm. them running out of food where they're saving the lion's share of food for mm. the pilots who are defending them, yeah. and the people were going hungry. Mm. You even saw an old man steal food from the kids' <laughs> yeah. kids' uh, um, like they're, they're, tray, yeah. which is indicative of... Uh, uh, some of the harsher times in, mm -hmm. uh, of course, they probably didn't stock a lot of food on that place in, right. in with the intention of being a refugee ship, <laughs> yeah. which made me think they should yeah. really drop off as many of the people mm -hmm. as possible, but being in territory that's hostile, yep. that wasn't an option. However, they did drop off some. Mm -hmm. So how so is that? Well, so there are a couple of things that the series has been hinting at. Um, you'll notice that every time they fly over um, any sort, well, whenever they're, they're flying over Xeon territory, you either see nature or bombed out cities. Ah, lots of bombed out cities. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's like time has taken over whatever hasn't been populated by humans or destroyed. That's the thing is that the war with Xeon and their, their control of their territory required so much destruction that there's not that much left, frankly. Um, so it's, how does that fit in there? Um, <laughs> I find myself asking those kind of questions quite frequently. Ah, there we go. Uh, there oh. may be, uh, ah, well, a little bit of, um, discussion here. Hello, <laughs> Hex Bag. Um, yes, that, that's, that, that's Bebop. You got it right. Bebop. <laughs> yeah. Um. Jet and um, Spike got my back. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I love the, uh, the pink bubblegum goop that they use to, uh, uh, whenever there's a, a hole breach, they just sort of pull a lever. That is brilliant, <laughs> yes. and it makes a lot of sense. Um, in other shows, mm. uh, science fiction, anywhere where there's space involved mm -hmm. or, or battle, I've often thought uh, some sort of a plastic sphere of goop yeah. would be fantastic for immobilizing a troop, a, a, a glue ball, basically, a big mm -hmm. mug ball. I'm back to like monkeys throwing poo, but <laughs> the idea of being able to have something ballistically sent across mm. to your enemy that may not necessarily pierce the shell or mm. go, may go through them, having something that gums up their gears so yeah. it begins to immobilize them. Anything that reduces your 
opponent's ability to move, shoot, or communicate mm. is leverage in a battle. Yeah. And we see in this series that there are a natural force of the particles. What were these particles called? Minofsky particles. Minofsky particles. And that interferes with their ability to communicate, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic physical force of nature as we buy into this world mm. that it is something that can be leveraged against their opponents. And uh, uh, hmm. a few flickers here. We're having more, <laughs> more thunder it's and exciting. lightning. You may or may not hear that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it, it's, it's a great example of the that kind of thinking through the science where, uh, you know, you got to decide, okay, why do we have close combat um, in space? Mm. You know, why don't you just keep it a distance and lob missiles at each other? <laughs> I mean, or, or, or energy balls or what have you. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, a, it's a decent question. And so they answer that by saying, well, the... Uh, the, I believe, nuclear fission uh, reactors that they use give off these things called Minofsky particles, which mm -hmm. block radar as a side effect. Um, and in fact, you'll, you'll even, um, it's at the point now where battleships will store excess Minofsky particles and then use them to blanket an area um, as a uh, sort of a decoy thing, which is a pretty, pretty good idea. Um, in 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 space, it seems like the the those those pink blobs though would be the ideal way of uh, of of reinforcing any holes through uh, the bulkheads or shell yeah. of the of the ship and stop it from decompressing basically <laughs> and freezing everybody to death. Yeah, something plastic to fill the hole is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you'd want to have something, definitely. Any realistic science like that, or at least. Theoretical science that you know, okay, we've bought into this universe. Mm. They have they're still under the laws of nature though Yeah, and they have to deal with these things mm -hmm. It was a, it was a brilliant and, and I think that this may be something in science fiction that we'll see mm. as a great concept that somebody will start working towards that that end goal as yeah. we see with a lot of different science fiction a great idea comes out and then enough people say well Huh. It could be <laughs> if we did this, if we did that, this might be doable. Mm -hmm. Just inspired by the vision of mm. how this can actually be done. Yeah. Um, I'm at part B4. Oh, cool. Before what? <laughs> uh, there we go. One of, the, one of the really fun things about this, too, is the kind of Lego element of it of basically um, there will be parts the group we were mentioning where you're playing around with it and suddenly you realize um, um, you have no idea how this fits together but if you play around with it for a while you can figure it out yeah just and 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 it develops the the visual spatial skills mm -hmm. uh, I find myself after after working on a kit like this really more attuned to fine details and how things fit together mm -hmm. furniture even arranging yeah. <laughs> arranging the room absolutely <laughs> let's see g27 b4 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 there we go That's oh lots of b4s <laughs> so that is there and then a11 and a16 as now, <laughs> we're under heavy bombardment here. <laughs> um, now, the, uh, the the folks over at Tested are doing a, a very interesting model kit where they are um, building a Millennium Falcon model kit. It's a magazine kit, meaning that you... Magazine kit? Yeah, so every month, so you, you buy a subscription to a magazine, and every month you get a new issue of the magazine plus parts for a kit. Like installment. Exactly. Oh, that is cool. Um, this is a, I believe, 130 scale um, Millennium Falcon, so it's about the size of this table. That's a huge model. It, it's ridiculously huge. Yeah, um, they have some space for something like yeah. that. <laughs> um, the problem is, because it's a, a subscription kit, uh, that means it is a 26-month kit. So, so... So that's more than a year there. That's uh, <laughs> twenty six. That's that's more than two years. It's a little over two years that they'll be making that kit. And uh, um, what's also interesting is that every every week you get a little every month you get a little bag of, of parts. 
I think it was originally a weekly kit, actually. How, how far along are they in that? Uh, they're, they're, they, I just saw the first month. Uh, they, they started on that. Do they sell back, back subscriptions? They do. Um, and I, I think it, it's originally a British kit that they're now selling in the U.S. So the British kit is rather ahead of us, and I think we're a couple of months in, something like that. So that means it's all in metric rather than standard. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's interesting watching them play around with that because you'll get some... Um, because you'll get these um, these monthly packages of parts, but of course you're not getting part every single part for that month. Hmm. So some of the parts are for later, later and previous. Yeah, exactly. So um, so they got a bunch of parts and they put together a few things. Like that's it. Well, yeah, because you know, in order to space it out, you've got to you've got to figure out how, which parts go where. So it becomes a, an interesting um, um, scenario. Yeah, an adventure there, putting it together, keeping track of things, and then right. Well, that's the other other side of that too. When you think about it, is um, you know, it's kind of like what we, we're doing here. Okay, you're done for the month. Now everything has to go somewhere because next month you got to bring it all back out and figure <laughs> out where you were. Remember where was I? <laughs> <laughs> and and. And you guys may have seen it. Took me a little while to figure out. Okay, where was I? What mm. part was I on? Yeah. Oh, this piece fell off because it's not tight <laughs> yet. But <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. Okay, so that's there. Uh, this goes on like. What's interesting for me is there, there, there's more than one way sometimes to mm. put a part in, and it can come to an aesthetic of, well, there's more mm. sand marks on this, this is smoother yeah, on that side. Yeah, good point. And uh, which piece do I want to put in for the most beautiful mm. result? Let's see here, that looks like it should fit. But it doesn't want to. Oh, there we go. Okay. You just needed some, some play. Um, then, huh. No. Some play. Really? Some play. Some. It's almost some, like we're playing. Some pla. Some pla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the uh, the Gundam series where they uh, uh, they actually battle with Gundam model case, it's a very weird idea. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's actually a, a Gundam series where they um, do little kind of um, what's the term for almost like Pokemon style battles with their model kits. Hmm. And uh, the they actually have um, energy particles in there, and and, and there it's plasticky uh, 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 particles, hmm. and it's plastic combined with Minovsky. Plasticky. <laughs> plasticky. It took me a while to realize. Oh, that's really going with that. That's cute. <laughs> C five. Wow. Yeah. Some some thunder yeah. and bits and. <laughs> Let's see. G2. Moving on to some larger parts here. G two. Now there was a there was a an expo. Yeah. Nope. Let's see. We still seem to be online. Nine viewers. Cool. Oh. Um. Hopefully this isn't affecting the hub. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other um, thing. Good point. Um. Uh. Japanese Sandman. That's an awesome name. Japanese Sandman. Um. Hmm. Yeah, uh, imagine you're you're subscribed to the that Millennium Falcon thing, and uh, the the tenth issue gets lost in the mail. No, <laughs> it cannot be. Right. And so, and again, they, they do sell um, back issues. The other problem with that is that each issue costs fifty dollars. So over the course of twenty six uh, uh, issues, that's gonna that's gonna cost a lot. So so if you're gonna do it, you're gonna commit. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, they, and they did, they did point out that, as expensive as that sounds, it is it is a metal framed kit. Um, oh. So in a sense, so for something that large, it ends up being something like fifteen hundred dollars uh, for the entire thing. And they said that's not outside the realm of it's not a completely insane price or something like that, that big. It's it's expensive, but it's you know. It should be exciting to see see some 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 of the folks who finish those and display them. Yeah. I wonder what percentage will get finished. In... <laughs> Good point. You know, one thing I wonder about is when I'm when I'm working on a model. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, my visual field is what what I've got in my hands, mm. and 
and I hear stuff in the background. <laughs> Uh, so I'll, I'll try and watch shows that don't require me to look up too much to yeah, the show. Yeah. And I can listen to almost like a radio program. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, what do you listen to when you do models and, uh, what other, what, what some of our other folks, uh, listen to while they do models? Yeah, what do you guys think, chat room? That's a good question. Um, personally, I usually listen to music. So if I have a new album I've got that I want to... Uh, you know, really get into. I will put that on and just play it over and over. Um, I'm one of these weird people. I have a tough time um, not paying attention to something. <laughs> so, like, if it's if it's there and I should be watching it, I'll be watching it. Um, <laughs> so I just have a really I, I I can't not look up while the show is going on. I find it hard to ignore certain shows. Yeah. What shows did uh, have you watched that way? Well, I remember doing some kits where I had Big Bang Theory in the background. Uh, and for the yeah, most yeah. part, I could follow it, mm -hmm. but every now and then I, you have to look <laughs> and see what's going on. And um, I kind of feel like I missed out on, on some of the series because I wasn't watching, mm. because there are certain things that are definitely people's responses that are mm. nonverbal, uh, sure. non sequiturs, uh, <laughs> uh a number of different things that you just got to see the scenario to mm. really understand what's going on. But usually you can kind of feel mm -hmm. where those are coming in a lot of shows because the dialogue suddenly slows or there's a lull. Uh, yeah. And that lull is not the natural <laughs> flow of dialogue mm -hmm. indicating, oh, hey, look at this. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah. What I found interesting is some animes are more mm. auditorily... Uh, communicating hmm. shows, and some are more visually communicating shows. Yeah, and uh, of course, with with some of the anime shows, I gotta look up and see what's <laughs> going on. But some of them, I can't look away because as soon as I do, I miss something. And there's right. a joke. There's a visual representation. Yeah, well, I mean, imagine watching Cowboy Bebop that way. It just would not work. Hmm. But for um, I mean, Yamada's first time actually wouldn't be a bad example of a show. I think you could probably watch a fair amount of that way. Well, some of the visuals are that's true. just so amusing. That is true. I suppose if I was watching something in rerun, mm. and that's that's one thing I did with some of the other shows, is uh, I've already seen this show, but it's, it's a fun show, so I'll put mm. that on in the background mm -hmm. and listen to a rerun. And those are those are fun to do. Yeah. G2, part 10. G2. I put on random. That's a good... Which one? Good idea. Uh, so, uh, uh, Japan, Japanese Sandman has his iPod on random when he's uh, doing model kits. Yeah. Um, Hexbag91 says that uh, uh, he normally does uh, some game console modification mm -hmm. as opposed to model kit building. Oh, wow. And, uh, but he does it outside so we can hear the birds. That's nice. 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 I like that. I wish we could do that today, but I think uh, sounds <laughs> yeah. like a Gundam battle Not so out much there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I am on to the next page. Um, it says a sticker is supposed to go on, but I have no idea where, and it's not labeled. So I'm going to ignore that. Uh oh, I think I missed a sticker somewhere. Mm. Oh no, I can go back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the stickers are designs so you can put them on later, in case. Um, the seventeen. I almost have one frame completely empty. Nice. One more piece. <laughs> Always a good sense of accomplishment. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when I get something built, I have a little bit of feeling of, oh, mm. it's over. Yeah. <laughs> a little postpartum depression there. Yeah. <laughs> My baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to build another. Exactly. It's going to need a brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, that's that's where it gets fun. You can start doing some dioramas. Um, really doing some fun stuff there. Um, where's the blade? There we go. No. Let's see. Part number 15. 14... Five, four. Enjoy Mad Max, Mad Japanese Max. Sandman. I love that movie. This love, love, love. 
Is that another quick tip? If you are looking at a piece and you're not sure if what you have is a stud that should come off, or see that right there, I'm not sure if that is a stud. I'm not sure if that is a, a stud that should come off there, or if it is a bit of a sprue. Go back and look at its mate on the um, on the kit. So this came from here. Um, sorry, over here, and sure enough, it came from right there. So there's a similar mirror image one. Yeah, there's a, most of these will have a mirror image one. So I can see that ah, that connected right there. So that needs to come off. So if you're ever in doubt, you can usually find a corresponding piece and use that as your basis. Uh, sand a bit more of that on. The first model kit I built was actually a friend's model kit, hmm. strangely enough. Um, I think either I bought it for him or uh, he bought it and he said he just didn't want to build it. And so he said he'd just give it to me. Um, it and nice. I said, yeah. And I'd never done one of these before. So I said, OK, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. And so I just popped it open and started building. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was fun. Still have it around somewhere. That was a Wing Gundam model kit. It's going to be a fun drive home. Hmm. Have I got this on the right side? Mm. Nope. This nope. <laughs> <laughs> Redo. Yep. Ah. Another great thing about having a non gluing model. Always pop it off and start again. And yes, I've had cases where I get three quarters of the way through a model, realize I have to pop off you know, everything all the way back to stuff. step five. Yep. All right. And so now we are putting this middle frame uh, with a 17 like that. Up the, hmm. Up there. Wow. And then this. There. Good. Good. Whew. Then part 14. Ah. <laughs> it's all coming together. I do like the snap togethers a little bit better because mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about the messiness of the glue. Yeah. Sometimes Eight, it gets a little tricky mm. when you get that stuff on. Mm. It, it since it dissolves the plastic to a small degree, mm. if you get a little dribble of it somewhere <laughs> and you don't realize it, next thing you know, you've touched three or four parts and they're starting to lose uh, their structure. Yeah, it's kind of nice not to have that problem with the mm -hmm. snap and the cleanup and the smell is always yeah, yeah. a factor too. True, but that can be so fun. Yeah. <laughs> what are you even doing? I've been doing models. <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> the Dark Devil, your first was a, an HG00 Quanta. Nice. Hmm. From Gundam 00, I'm sure. I forget what the Quanta looks like. I'm to look that up. So this will be my first four. My first Gundam. Yeah. Not my first model, but my first Gundam. <laughs> exactly. What was your first model? You know, I, I don't remember. Oh, wow. For years, they used to have little model kits that were snap togethers. Mm -hmm. They weren't as refined as this, mm. of all sorts of different things, airplanes, cars, mm -hmm. different toys. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what my first one was. Hmm. It was so many years ago. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yep. There <laughs> and this goes here. <laughs> there. Uh, and then a an E twelve. E E. There's an E. E twelve. Yeah, the uh, the level of detail in these, and I love how you get you know all the little markings in there, the little 
lines, just really all that detail is wonderful. Gorgeous. And I suppose having having a lot more experience under my belt would help yeah. if before I started doing painting because there are certain yeah. parts on this where if you painted it, it may not fit together as well mm. by painting a spot that's not going to be seen or, or a spot that is seen. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. May make it a little thicker or thinner so it doesn't fit together. True. Do most people who paint them put them together first and then take apart the parts that they want to paint? Or um, I believe, yeah, you normally you, you paint the parts first and then you go on from there. That does not look at all like the part I have in my hand. Um, E12 and C26. That is E12. No, that's E13. <laughs> okay. I did that with the decals. Yep. 15, 16. Uh, they were so close together. <laughs> it's only one off, right? Yeah. This is a good exercise in, in being specific. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Paying attention. Okay, come on. Get off there. All right, I'm going to have to. Do you hear the sound of sirens? Of sirens. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hmm. It's the sound, the sound of, of sirens. sirens. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun parody to make. That would. Cop cars coming down the road. Oh no! Now we'll be taken off of uh, YouTube. <laughs> the sound of sirens. <laughs> Of course, the other nice thing is if you really screw up in a way that is just unrecoverable, <laughs> a new kit's like 15 bucks. So so unlike the the model that's installments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, with, with installments, you could get just that one issue. Mm, true. Rather than the entire model. Well, hopefully, rather than the <laughs> yeah, entire yeah. model. <laughs> I'm going to be here for the next two years putting this together. <laughs> C it took 26. me this many years. <laughs> C26. Ah, ball joint. Mm. That's a good way to start model kits. Don't know where to start. Yeah, I would I would pick any high grade. It's a great question. Uh, pick any high grade model that you like, that looks interesting. Um, I don't think there's any really bad high grade model kits. I'm sure there are folks who are deep into this who will tell you, oh, this one's a little easier than that one. But in general, I think, you know, you can just you just go. Uh, that goes into that somehow. Possibly, if you're familiar with other model kits, it mm -hmm. might help, because there is a little bit of intimidation not being able to read the Japanese. Yeah. Um, if you read Japanese, go for it. Yep. Don't, don't even hesitate. But yeah. if, if you don't, you could try some some that are designed around uh, English speaking users mm -hmm. and uh, just play around with getting familiar with models. Yeah, true. Um, but get, getting your hands into it is the best way. Yep. Even if you break something and you think it didn't work, you can still sometimes go back and make it almost perfect. Yeah. Um, I do a little bit with metal models, and mm. quite often there's a piece that if you bend it too many times, the metal tab breaks mm. off and you can't fasten it. Uh. But there's usually some other way around that. Mm. Another piece might hold it together or fasten to it. So, so don't give up if you have any failures. Just mm. keep at it, and if you need to, use glue. <laughs> <laughs> That's good advice, I think, for uh, for life in general. Yeah, <laughs> I could use more life glue. <laughs> <laughs> that pink stuff that uh, plugs yeah, the holes exactly. when, <laughs> when the air escapes. <laughs> See here, that's not fitting on well at all. Why not? What is that supposed to do? You know, the idea of painting in battle damage can cover mm. up a multitude of mistakes. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. That scratch there, that's intentional. That was mm -hmm. battle damage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of nice. Hmm. Okay. I've got a set of wings. Oh, cool. Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. 
they look great when they when they pop on. Yeah. All right, so that slides down. I would think that would slide down a little further, but I guess you have kind of the G seven skeletal idea. There. Oh, whoops, G <laughs> backwards. Well, that would that would make a difference. Um, get off. Model building we go. creates some interesting scenarios. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll have a part that's an exact copy, and sometimes mm -hmm. you'll have a part that's a mirror image. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of a useful concept uh, in in life, being able to understand the, the idea of chi chirality. Mm. Um, it, they use this term in chemistry mm -hmm. when they describe a molecule, mm. and it's even though your left hand and right hand are similar, they're not the same. Because mm. if you place them on top of each other, they don't match up exactly. Ah. Uh, but they're a mirror image of each other, so they do match up, but only in as a mirror image, not mm. as a duplicate. Right. Yeah. So that left-right is sort of distinguishes the way that they are. Mm. So they have a levo and uh, a levo and a dextro. Hmm. Uh, form of describing this molecule is the same as the other except it curves to the right or okay. this curves to the left and realizing that there's that kind of distinction um, they came out with using the terms uh, of chirality uh, to hmm. describe the same but different <laughs> gotcha yeah and what are those terms levo and well levo is left and dextro is right sort of oh. like uh, uh, left for levo and mm. dexter like dexterous. Okay. Uh, dexter is right. So somebody who's skilled with both right hand and left hand mm. is ambidextrous. Okay. Meaning both right hand, mm. which okay. is kind yeah. of a silly, <laughs> it's a very biased way of describing yeah. it. But because the majority of people are right handed, mm. saying somebody has two right hands <laughs> means that they can use them both with that dexterity. <laughs> so it's kind of an interesting idea that uh, there could even be a third form of hmm. a molecule's wow. adjustment. Yeah, wow. Since most of our universe is uh, left and right, mm -hmm. not too many people have played around with the idea of, of a third. Yeah. Remember when uh, in the Larry Niven series, The Moten God's Eye, when they had the idea of the motis who are um, uh, non-symmetrical. Hmm. In body shape, so um, wow. they have one arm on the one large arm on the right side and two smaller arms on the left side, <laughs> and other things like that that just makes them <laughs> different, which led to a um, a thing which then get got uh, or a saying which then got um, picked up by science fiction fandom in general. So if you hear this, uh, you'll know now where it's from. Uh, people would say, on the one hand, on the on the other hand, on the gripping hand. On the gripping hand. <laughs> on the one hand, the other hand, the gripping hand. <laughs> Oh, I gotta, I gotta listen for that because that could pass over a person's head without them knowing exactly. if they weren't familiar with that. <laughs> on the one hand, on the other hand, on the gripping hand. All right, now I have my. I'm gonna chuckle next time somebody says, "Get a grip." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have got a leg. Whoa! So there's a you got a leg up leg. on the situation. Exactly. Here. Very detailed. My gosh. Wow. Ever ceases to amaze me how much they put into these things. Um, even with little booster rockets on the on the bottom of the uh, the thing. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's true. So the next the the, the next step um, beyond painting is building your own by kit bashing together ah, different kit bashing. Kits.